Hello. Today I am going to look at zone recovery. This is not a topic that I would normally cover, but we've received a lot of requests for it, and so I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it properly. So zone recovery is sometimes referred to as a no-loss technique. Uh, you'll see this in a lot of presentations. But I have to warn you, zone recovery is a martingale technique. The reason people can refer to it as no loss is because they keep going further and further into the system and taking bigger and bigger positions until eventually it closes at no loss. But being a martingale technique, that means that it carries a high risk because eventually if you don't get out of the cycle, it can grow and grow and grow. And just because the probability of a long term of losing is low doesn't mean it's an impossibility. It also means it's not suitable for small accounts because each time you have to grow by a certain percentage and the zone recovery technique isn't a simple doubling up technique. It wants to be able to calculate percentages and proportions of your lot size. So if you have a very small account, you'll be starting with maybe a 0.01 lot size and it's very difficult or impossible to create parts of that in the next stage. So you wind up doubling your trade size very, very quickly. So it's really not suitable for a small account. You need to be able to trade something like a full lot to begin with, and then you can begin calculating hundredths of that to increase the lot size. And finally, I do not recommend using this technique. It is high risk, and although you may go for a long time without losing, there will come a point where the price simply goes against you too often and you lose your entire account. But having given you those warnings, I am going to cover zone recovery. It is a complex topic and when I was making these recordings it became too long for a single video. So I'm going to cover zone recovery in three parts. Today is part one and this is a description of zone recovery, how it works, how you can calculate the levels and I have a zone recovery calculator that you can use. And then when we get to part two in the next video I'll show a standard class that you can attach to your own expert advisors and that class will take care of managing the position for you and taking subsequent trades until eventually you close out. And then part three, I'm going to introduce some variations and modifications that might make your trading better and they might be more suitable to your trading style. So let's start with the description of how zone recovery works. So if you can imagine this line on the screen is my entry point and I'm going to be describing this from the position of a buy trade. Sell trades are simply the opposite. So I'm going to assume I'm entering a trade here at whatever currency this is, whatever price. You'll notice I haven't put any prices on the screen just so that I can keep this abstract. Once that's done, I know that I have an exit point. So this is suitable for the types of trades where I have a fixed distance exit. It's not really suitable for trades where I might decide that I'm going to trade or close on a reversal of the indicator. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do that, but that's a further variation to zone recovery. The standard technique is that you have a fixed take profit point. So that's the exit point here. And in my example, I'm going to use 100 pips as my exit point. So I'm entering and I'm looking for an exit 100 pips further away. Once you have that, then you need to establish a zone. You can think of the zone like the stop loss that you would normally have. In my example, I'm going to use 40 pips as the zone size. So I'm entering at one point, I have a take profit 100 pips above, I have a zone 40 pips below, and then there is a further exit point 100 pips below that zone. So we're effectively establishing two trading areas, one above and one below the zone, and a 40 pip zone. So in the first instance, I might buy a single lot. And then if that lot simply moves up to the exit point, then I've made a profit of 100, which is my one lot by 100 pips. If that one lot doesn't move up to the buy exit point and actually makes a reversal, then at the bottom of the zone, I will sell 1.4 lots. So that 1.4 lots is calculated such that when I do reach that exit point at the bottom, 1.4 lots by the 100 pips profit I'll make on that sell trade offsets the one lot that I bought multiplied by the 100 plus 40 pips that I'm losing that by. So this is a zero loss situation. I've made a loss on a buy of 140 pips, 
but I've made a profit on a sell of 1.4 lots, which is equivalent to the same value. If we assume that after we cross that bottom level of the zone, we don't actually go down to the lower exit point, but the price reverses again. So in this situation, we have a price reversal and the price moves above the top of the zone again. And here at this point, I would buy 0.96 lots. So once I buy that 0.96 lots, I have a total buy position of 1.96 and a total sell position of 1.4. The sell, of course, opens at a lower price. So I'm losing 140 pips on that 1.4 lots of sell, and I'm making 100 pips on the 1.96 lots of buy. And that also gives me a profit of zero, being one by 100 minus 1.4 by 140, plus 0.96 by 100. So this is the entire technique for zone recovery. At each point, you enter a trade such that if the price continues and reaches the exit point on that side of the zone, then you will come out to a profit of zero. Now, with rounding, sometimes it's impossible to get to exactly zero, but the intent is that you get close to zero with this. Now, at this point, it's very important to show a lot of examples you'll see will stop here. And this is because at this point, the buy trade is actually smaller than the initial buy trade and it's smaller than the sell trade. And this often confuses people and fools a lot of people into thinking that your positions are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. They're not. You have to look at the net position. So when I took out the initial one lot buy, I had a net position of one lot. When I took out the sell of 1.4 lots, that offset the one lot, but I had a net position of 0.4 lots selling. Then when I take out the buy of 0.96 lots, if you add all of that together, I actually have a net position of 0.56 lots. So my net position has grown from that sell point and it will continue to grow and we'll see some more examples soon. So that 0.96 is confusing because it is an actual increase in the total position size. When I took the sell of 1.4 lots, that might look like I'm actually getting a smaller position. But remember, if I closed at the bottom of the zone, then I'm only closing at zero profit and zero loss, where the original buy, if that had closed at the top of the zone, I would be closing for a profit of 100 pips. So don't confuse these smaller lot sizes with being a diminishing investment for the same return. All we're doing at this point is trying to come out of this trade at break even. So let's take this one further leg, because as I said, a lot of examples will stop here because this is the last point using these numbers where I'm actually trading at a smaller lot size than the original trade. So in this case, the price reversed again, and now I'm selling 1.35 lots. And when that reaches the lower exit point, I'm still getting a profit, but it's 0.6 pips. So that profit of 0.6 pips, it's very small, almost nothing. And it's only there because of rounding. I also haven't accounted for commission and spread and other costs in this. So effectively these zero loss finishes will have some loss in them because you'll have paid a commission and spread of one, maybe two pips at each point. Uh, when we see the calculator later, I'll show you how you can adjust for that. But remember, we're still trying to basically come out of this at no loss. We're no longer trying to make a profit. Now, here are the results of some calculations that I've made. Uh, and this is using the calculator that I'll show you soon. The first trade is one lot. Means we've got a net position of one. Total exposure, one here. Uh, and we have no loss so far. And if that closes at profit, then we've made 100 pips, one lot by 100 pips. At the second trade, we're trading 1.4 lots. That gives us 1.4 in the direction of the trade, one lot against that. So we've got a total exposure of 0.4. The total exposure is important because that's what your broker will use to calculate your margin. So we've actually reduced our total margin requirement at this point. But remember, we're no longer trying to make a profit. We're just trying to close without losing. But we do have an equity loss so far. That 40 pips that the price has moved against us shows up as an unrealized loss and our equity has dropped by 40 pips. 
So that's something we're carrying. Even though we haven't closed a trade yet and realized any loss, our equity, our available trading balance has gone down. And that means that our available margin has gone down. So if you're trading a small account, you'll see your margin diminishing at this point and you still haven't realized a profit. And when we do close, assuming that's the last trade in the cycle, we'll close at no profit, no loss, uh, a small loss because of the additional costs that I mentioned earlier. The third trade, 0 0.96 lots, and this will be a buy, or it will be the same direction as the first trade, gives us 1.96 lots in that direction of that trade, 1.4 lots against, which came from the previous trade. So our exposure, 0 0.56 net lots. And we're now at an equity loss of 56 pips. So we're carrying a growing unrealized loss at each trade. And while this says minus 0, 0.0, that's a, a rounding difference there. It's a very small negative number, close to zero. If you look then down the list, you can see that the lots that we're trading are growing faster and faster. This is a typical Martingale situation. The growth is exponential to the point where if we have to go through 20 trades, we would be trading 293 lots. And that's well beyond what most brokers will allow you to trade. We would also have an unrealized equity loss of 17,130 pips, which is probably more than your account can handle. And we're still only aiming to come out of this at the zero loss rather than make any kind of profit. Now, if you want to take the chance and assume that you'll get out of this somewhere around trade, uh, say trade 10, where you've had a maximum equity loss of 592, and you do recover that when the trades close. This is 592 unrealized at the point where you take out trade number 10. And then when trade number 10 eventually closes and all the other trades close, you'll lose a few pips through the additional costs, but you'll be close to break even. So if you assume that your sequences are never going to go more than 10, then you might be comfortable with this. But beyond that, the exposures and the equity required to simply trade just to stay in the game become prohibitive. And that's why I don't recommend this. But as I said, a lot of people ask for this. And so this has been my explanation of how zone recovery works. Now I just want to demonstrate to you a calculator that's available for you to use. There is a link in the description below and I'll put one up on screen as well. You can access this on our website and use it to perform your own calculations here. This is the Orchard Forex Zone Recovery Calculator. Uh, and I actually used this to produce the numbers in that previous display. Uh, there should be a link on the screen here where you can find this calculator and there should also be something in the description for this video. These are the same numbers that I used in my example. There's a target pip, which I'm saying is 100, and that is the take profit point on each side of the zone. The zone width, 40 pips here. I'm trading an initial size of one lot and lot step. This is the smallest increment that your lots can take. Uh, and 0 0.01 is true for most currencies, it might be one lot for other types of products. Uh, so you can adjust this according to whatever your broker allows as the smallest amount that you can change the lot size. And then spread plus, spread plus commission, I've added this in because as I said, these calculations don't account for the possible costs like commissions and spreads and swap. Now commission is generally fixed, you know what that's going to be. But the spread will vary throughout the course of the trade. So I can't really fully account for that. All I can do is allow you here to enter a fixed number of pips and say that is going to be your estimated total spread plus commission. This isn't really going to calculate a profit for you. You can use it to set an extra profit. So if you think that your spread plus commission is one pip or two pips, and you'd like to make a tiny profit even when you're just trying to recover, you can always set this to one pip more or two pips more. It won't show a profit in the calculator here because when you set this value, it assumes that that's going to be a cost to you. But if you trade according to the lot sizes in here and your costs don't amount to the number that you've put in this spread plus commission, then you'll find that you have a small profit left over at the end. The other cost though is swap. If you're holding these positions for some time, 
swap will continue to accumulate and there is no way to account for that with this calculator because there's no way to know how long you're going to be holding those positions and how much that swap is going to accumulate. So this is an approximation only. Use this with all the caveats and taking the risk that this is only to help you with the trading. All we need to do though, if I wanted to change the size of my zone, so you can see the numbers here are the same I had before. Uh, one lot on the first trade, 1.4.96, 1.35. If I said that I was going to set my target at 200 pips, you can see that these numbers have all changed. One lot, 1.2 lots, 0.44 lots. So this tells you how much to trade at each point. And always the even numbered lines are trading in the opposite direction to the odd numbered lines. So trade number one is your initial entry. Trade number two is a trade in the opposite direction when you reach the other side of the zone. If I make this zone bigger, say 50, you can see the numbers have also changed. So those are the two key numbers for doing the zone calculations, the target pips and the zone pips, and they will affect these most dramatically. If I do want to allow for spread plus commission, and let's just say that's two pips, that has almost no impact. You'll see this number here changed. So on line two, it's 1.26 now. If I take that back to zero, it's 1.25. So this is a very small impact, mostly because it's usually a very small number. The initial lot size, as I was saying earlier, the big impact here is in rounding. So let me take this back to my original defaults. 140 there. So I have an initial lot size of one. If I'm trading with a very small account, now you can see I've gone from one lot here to 1.4 lots to 0.96. So trade three is slightly smaller than trade one and trade two is 1.4 times. But if I'm trying to trade this on a very small account and I'm trying to trade 0.01, my first trade, yes, it's 0.01, but suddenly my second trade is twice that size. And my third trade now is the same size as the second trade. So the rounding causes this to accelerate much faster than with a large lot size. Just change that back to one. So that's my quick description of how zone recovery works. Uh, I, as I said, do not recommend this, but we do get a lot of requests from people wanting to try it. There are a lot of people who believe that they can handle the risk that's associated with this. This calculator is available and again, links in the description below, and it will remain on our website. So you can come in here at any time, enter the numbers that are appropriate to your trading and see what you come up with. If I just scroll this down a little, you will see though that at trade number 20, which you should never reach, uh, you would be trading 293 lots, which is simply too much to trade. So that's it for this first video on zone recovery. Uh, the next one we'll get back to coding and I'll build a class where you can simply add a trade to that class and it will then take that trade as the beginning of a position and then trade more positions as you cross the boundaries of the zone until it eventually closes out at either profit or at break even. Uh, and I'll even show a demonstration of that attached to a very simple EA. So you'll be able to attach that class to any of your EAs. And then in the third installment, I will get into some variations on the way that you perform these trades that might be a little bit easier for you to follow and they might actually give you some advantages. So I hope you found this useful as a starter to zone recovery. If you have, please click the like button and if you want to see more videos, subscribe and click the bell icon and you'll be notified as we release more videos. Thank you for watching.